Hi, my name is Isaac Lamont uh, from Johnson Johnson, uh, Enterprise Senior Product Manager there. I'm really excited about the topic we're about to dive into. Um, something I'm really passionate about is accelerating business outcomes. Um, and we believe we have a decent framework to help teams do that that we've been uh, leveraging within that at j, &J. Um, So at a high level, we're gonna just provide an overview of what OKRs are, because we believe that if you ask, Know, 10 different product managers, 10 different uh, product leaders within the industry, what OKRs are, and you may get 10 different answers. So we want to just level set as to um, how we are defining OKRs based on the teams that we're engaging, and then talk through why you want to map outcomes to OKRs and, and why we were pushing to do this with the teams that we're engaging, and then walk through via mirror how to actually do that, how to actually tie your outcomes to OKRs, how to shape your key results based upon behavior changes, prioritize what you should be focusing on, you know, prioritize what you should be measuring, and then different approaches do that. Right? Because there may be some instances where you know exactly what you should be measuring. There may be some instances where you need to experiment. Um, so we wanted to walk through that and, and provide some guidance on how to do that uh, as a best practice. Okay. Um, so some, some folks may ask, say, Isaac, how do you define OKR? So that's what we have here. Right, OKRs, which stands for Objective and Key Results, for folks that, that are not aware, are an agile leadership and goal management framework, which helps organizations to become more adaptive, drive continuous learning and development, uh, and create engagement accountability for uh, company objectives and teams. Um, they really help uh, teams reach their desired business outcome, right? Um, they provide a clear, you know, unified definition of what success looks like, um, they identify the key behavior changes to, to achieve and drive meaningful impact uh, for both the customer and the business. Um, and for us, they're a great way to know that we're on track to achieve the expected outcome that we're looking for, right? So those key results, which I'll talk about in a few, are, are a way to do that. Uh, they help answer um, why and which customer behaviors are, are, are key for us to focus on to achieve uh, the business success that we're looking for. Hence, why we're such huge fans of them. And then lastly, they help align the product roadmap, you know, features, key actions, user stories, capabilities, you name it, with the desired outcome. So really driving a customer-centric product approach, especially if you're focused on driving uh, the customer behaviors needed uh, that are key for business success. So um, the challenge with what we see around OKRs is that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes we're not too clear on the outcome that uh, teams will achieve uh, as a result of addressing the objectives that make up their OKRs. Uh, a lot of times we see, them, we see them as outputs, very task focus, very deliverable focus, very milestone focus, uh, like project driven. Um, and then they don't always guarantee success. So for us, we wanted to take a step back. Like, okay, great, these are your OKRs, but what is the outcome you're trying to drive as a result of this? And this is what we wanted to map them back to. So for us, outcomes uh, drive the desired impact or result. They achieve the right output. They make sure that the output you're focused on are the right ones, hence helping you prioritize even better. Uh, they are measurable. They, they demonstrate some level of success. Uh, Josh Seiden, who wrote the book, a uh, recent book, Outcomes Over Output, we love his quote because it resonates quite well as to what we believe, is that outcomes are useful in a world where we're not sure that the thing that we, that we make will have the result that we want. So if you're not sure the thing you'll make have the result that you want, shouldn't we be starting with the outcome? And that's what we're trying to drive. We're trying to make sure that we have a connection between the two so that whatever we're making and whatever we're focused on, that priority is solely focused on achieving the outcome on behalf of the customer in the business. So you may say, Isaac, that's great. Um, no, tactically, what does that look like, right? Um, so outcomes I mentioned before, a meaningful impact on behalf of the customer, business, and sometimes of the key stakeholders. Um, a lot of times they're part of their product vision, they're derived from the product vision. Uh, and so if you're looking for your outcomes, um, go back to your product vision. If it's there, fantastic, just pull up in there. If it's not, that means you got some work to do. Uh, some examples of an outcome are you know, increased revenue, increased top line sales, uh, securing $3 million in cost savings. Those are examples of some decent outcomes that are that are you know that, that have a target that are potentially measurable. 
Objectives, we see them as a business need, a problem to solve to achieve the outcome. So if you, if you, if you actually address the business need, what is the outcome? How do, how do folks benefit from it? Um, and then typically has or identifies the change in behavior, right? Uh, so an example that we have here on the slide is that uh, it increased digital product descriptions by creating a seamless, delightful customer experience across channels, improving the adoption of our services. Uh, key results uh, that are tied to the objective, uh, we like to think of them as leading and lagging indicators, right? The key results uh, shouldn't always be after the fact. The key results should be measures that you're tracking along the way that tell you whether or not the problem you're trying to solve, the business need, the customer need is going to achieve the outcome that you defined. Uh, so the key results, one thing to act as signals, uh, and they're a mixture of leading and lagging indicators. A leading indicator for folks that aren't familiar are metrics which can inform teams on customer and market behavior to predict uh, and assess traction. Right. So once again, they, they give you some early indication whether or not you're going to achieve the result that you're looking for. So you're not necessarily waiting until your product has, has fully launched. This is actually while you're going through the product life cycle, you're measuring along the way to determine whether or not by the time you by the time you you've launched your product, uh, you have some indication whether or not you're going to achieve the outcome that you're looking for. And the lagging indicators are observable, measurable metrics that typically happen after your product is launched. Um, so these are metrics um, that track like the final step, the final behavior change needed to you know, achieve that you know, 10 percent increase in top line sales. And a lot of times the lagging indicator will be that measure. It will be how you will measure that 10 percent increase in top line sales. There are a couple of different frameworks you can leverage in support of this. Uh, we're big fans of the hard frameworks and the pirate metrics. Uh, so these are examples of frameworks to help you form some of your indicators. So if you're struggling coming up with, with leading and lag indicators, leverage those frameworks and you can use that um, to inform what your key results look like. So just to provide you some uh, examples, some further context as to like how these can be structured within, within large organizations like ours. Uh, so imagine you have a product group, that product group may have an outcome, may have a vision, but underneath that you have individual products, right? That are responsible for achieving that vision. Um, and then within those individual products, they may have their own outcomes themselves and you have individual squads focused on business needs, customer needs um, to uh, achieve uh, that product outcome. Uh, sometimes it's one-to-one, uh, sometimes there's, many, is, there's a many to one relationship. Um, so wanted to provide visibility and different dynamics and what this looks like. So for example, for product A, they have a specific outcome there. Um, and then the squads within that product, they may be focused on specific problems to solve to achieve that outcome. And they all may be measuring leading and lag indicators that are instrumental to achieving that outcome. Um, so they have clear visibility connection to um, the stuff that they're working on, which is their objectives, what they're measuring, which are the key results and the outcome that sits above that. So I wanna provide some visibility as to, uh, as to what that may look like in large organizations and how you would structure teams, structure squads and support or achieve the outcome they're looking for and the objectives that they're, they're supporting. So one example that's non jj related, that's, that's uh, Something that we came up with within our team is the, is, is the example of ISIS pizza shop. So imagine if I had a, a fictitious pizza shop that existed and I was treating it as a product. Um, no, my vision, my vision statement outcome I was trying to drive by if I actually owned this pizza shop would be to make this one of the preferred eateries in town, right? Make, us, make this the top pizza shop in town. I wanna have the best pizza. Uh, and I think if we have the best pizza in town, there's a good chance that sales will increase by 20% quarter over quarter, right? Um, fantastic, that's, that's my outcome. That's my, my mission, my vision statement. Um, but if you look underneath that, I have a couple of different squads that are responsible for specific problems and unmet needs in order to help achieve that outcome. So for example, the order management squad, their objective is to ensure customers are presented with their orders on time and info so they rate us higher. But there's a belief if we solve for this problem, there's a good chance that it would actually impact this outcome. 
Uh, same with their customer satisfaction squad. Their objective is to increase VP customers so they will spend more and our overall revenue increases. If you notice in both of those scenarios, uh, there's a problem to solve, there's an unmet need there, but there's also behavior change, right? And, and the customer satisfaction, that behavior change is that we want them to spend more. Um, so great, if these are our, our objectives that are tied to the outcome, then you know, that can then, and we know the behaviors, that can then inform what are some of the leading and lagging indicators to get there. Uh, so for the leading indicators tied to this first objective, uh, we want to see a decrease in customer order increase. So my work is I'm releasing uh, new features as part of my release plan. Um, I should see a decrease in customer orders um, through a, as a lead indicator. And then if we're seeing that decrease, that may be a good, good indication that it'll impact this lag indicator of on-time order fulfillment percentage, uh, no, bettering that. And then and then seeing an improvement around the open table service rating. And these are indicators that may take some time to get realized. Right? So if we're looking at customer satisfaction, the thinking is if I you know, release some new feature, release some new capability on my website, that would increase the number of loyalty account registrations. That's the lead indicator that tells me I may be improving my overall net promoter score and I may be also improving my sales compared against the baseline. Right. So these are leading indicators that that and that are behavior driven that show that if I get cheap X, there's a good chance I may achieve Y, which is my lagging indicator. Right. So uh, these are some decent examples. You may ask, hey, Isaac, this is great. But tactically, how do I actually do this? And I, we have a mural that we're going to make available after the webinar that actually helps teams with actually achieving this. Uh, the mural, um, as I highlighted in the agenda a little earlier, uh, helps with mapping your OKRs to your outcomes, uh, helps you prioritize what to focus on, because once again, teams are being asked to measure a lot. How do we just prioritize and measure what matters? Um, and then when it comes to actually measuring, uh, what is their approach in doing that, right? How do you actually you know, define a baseline? How do you know, what what how do you facilitate a conversation and get teams tracking? And, and then and when there are difficulties and actually identify what we should measure, how do we get teams to actually live into a mindset of a test learn experiment to reduce their uncertainty around the behavior changes you're trying to drive? So um, with this, I want to introduce you to the OKR mapping tree, right? So I'm not gonna take credit for this. This came from uh, Jeff Gahauf. Uh, he has a tree called Alcos Mapping that we thought it was like, no, just clicked for us. Uh, so we begged, borrowed, and stole that, and made a few tweaks to it, um, and then applied OKRs into that to help the teams uh, um, that we've been engaging in lately. Um, so we have at the top, you have an outcome, um, which, which, as I mentioned before, um, which speaks to the impact, the end result, once everything goes well, like how do we know that our strategy succeeded? Uh, that's the outcome. That's the, the the tangible impact of the work that we're doing, the benefit of what we're doing. And then we have underneath that the objective. So what problems do you need to solve to achieve the outcome? Uh, so what's the unmet need? What, what, what's that output? What, what do we need to solve in order to achieve that outcome? And then we have uh, two sets of behaviors that we want to identify. Um, one is what we call a, a lagging behavior, uh, um, which informs the lagging indicator. See, these are the final behaviors uh, that we can observe um, and or measure to indicate we're going to achieve our outcome, right? And, I, and I'll talk a little bit of that in detail in a few uh, as to what we mean by that. But essentially, is the way we rephrase it and the way we get teams thinking about this, like who does what? Like what needs to occur, uh, whether it's a customer, one of the key stakeholders, in order as a final step in order to achieve the outcome that you're looking for, right? And everything before that can be treated almost as like a leading behavior or, or a behavior that forms in a leading indicator. So these are behaviors that what that lead to the behavior change that we see above, right? So you can imagine this tree can become pretty complicated and detailed, and there may be a lot of indicators you want to measure. Um, so once again, we have a framework to help teams figure that out. But essentially what you're doing is you're mapping uh, all the behaviors needed to achieve uh, the, the outcome that you have only at the top of this tree. All right. Um, the one thing I'll say is that before jumping into this, uh, I wouldn't 
immediately go into this, I would actually do a little bit of, of homework around this, that there should be a bit of discovery. There should be a bit of ideation. You should, you know, a, a better understand what your problem is. You should better understand who your customers are. You should have a good sense as to what that journey looks like for them, for whatever product or solution you're standing up. Um, as if you jump to this without reducing their certainty around those elements, this can, be, can become a trap. Um, so it's highly recommended that you get a better sense of, of who your customers are, what problem you're trying to solve, if what you're doing is actually feasible and is what you're doing is actually viable. And then you can figure out, okay, you know, how do I shape my OKRs in support of uh, showing that I'm learning and making progress towards my outcomes. All right, so um, as I mentioned before, um, it, this, this does appear as a tree, so you can see that here. Uh, so you have your outcome statement at the top, you have your objectives that support that, that outcome statement, and you can have multiple objectives, you may have multiple squads, or you may be solving multiple problems to achieve, to achieve that objective, which is perfectly fine. And underneath that, you're gonna uh, identify the lagging behaviors, like the final behaviors that you can observe that indicate you're gonna achieve that outcome. So these are the ones that are a little in the, in the orange color. And, under, and below that are all the leading behaviors, right? All the behaviors that, it, that would lead to and inform uh, the ability to impact the behavior above that, that ties to your outcome. So one example of this, that's a healthcare related example, um, that actually has no connection to J&J, &J, but we figured why not just use a healthcare related example. Um, so in this example, we have the outcome of high quality patient care, resulting in the increased customer loyalty, increased in trials and market share. So the thinking is if we improve um, uh, the quality of patient care, this will lead to increased customer loyalty. Uh, they'll be willing to try out um, you know, some of our products uh, that we have available, resulting in the increase in market share. And then the, 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 there could be a couple objectives tied to this. We identified two that are somewhat related. One is related, directly, related directly to our customers, right? Uh, so if we, if we drive continuous learning and improve the customer satisfaction for healthcare professionals and office staff, there's a potential that it will drive this outcome that we have here. And then the other item is around the business, right? Uh, if we focus on increasing sales of healthcare products through a seamless experience, there's a good chance it would impact this outcome here. And then, as I mentioned before, there was some homework that was done prior to this to get to this point. Uh, so once again, I wouldn't jump directly into this. You should have some inclination. You should have validated that at, at a high level that these objectives may potentially achieve the outcome that you have here. And if you notice, these two objectives are actually related, right? So um, as, as they should be. Um, so just wanted to call that out. So for example, for this objective, drive continuous learning and improve customer satisfaction for healthcare professionals and office staff. The behavior, the, once again, the final behavior that we would like to observe in order to achieve this objective is that uh, the ACP, ACPs, the healthcare professionals, become more satisfied uh, with the education that's being provided education that we may be providing around our products and procedures, right? Um, that's the final behavior. That's the last thing we need them, we need to observe in order to show that, um, that they're satisfied, uh, we're improving the customer satisfaction, we're improving the, uh, when it comes to continuous learning for both the ACPs and the office staff, which may have the potential impact of, of the outcome that we have here at the top, right? So great. That's the final behavior. So what are some of the leading behaviors that we have identified uh, in, in this statistics example to help get to this final behavior, right? Uh, three we identified were ACPs uh, click more call to action links. Uh, ACPs visit our practice resources page more often. So we're providing this, this, this education material. Are, are they click on the links that we're providing? Are they going to the, the, the practice resource page more often? And then lastly, if they're rolling into the loyalty program, that's a good indicator that they may be more satisfied uh, with the education that's being provided, right? Uh, and then if you look at the objective related to the business, right, that the business really cares about, they wanna see increased sales of healthcare products through the same experience. For them, one of the final behaviors they wanna observe is 
the patient requests and buys more of our healthcare products. That's a final behavior that shows that there's a good chance that we'll be able to achieve the, objective, the, the outcome and objective that we have here, right? The steps required before that, and once again, these, these are all connected, the ACP trials uh, more patients with their healthcare products, and the ACP feedback improves via customer satisfaction survey. These are things that tell us that, well, no, no, these are behaviors that tell us that there's a good chance that uh, the, the patients request and collaborate with ACPs and, and buy more of our, or of our healthcare products, right? So these are behaviors, right? These aren't necessarily measures yet, but these are behaviors that we identified and prioritized that would be critical in order for us to achieve the outcome and objectives that we have here. So you can imagine this tree can, these trees can be you know, pretty detailed, pretty long, you may have multiple steps and multiple behaviors. As a result, we want to prioritize the behaviors we should focus on, right? We want to prioritize the behaviors that drive the most insight um, in support of validator and validating that the work that we're never focused on will achieve the outcome that we have here at the top. And the way we do that is that we leverage what's known as a prioritization metrics. Right? And the prioritization metrics are based on two elements. The concept of insight and effort is a two by two matrix uh, that helps us identify what are the metrics that matter? What are the metrics we need to focus on in order to achieve uh, and, and confirm that we're on track uh, to achieve the outcome that, that, that we've identified. And so by insight, uh, insight refers to uh, how much this indicator reflects progress on achieving the objective and outcome. Uh, for example, um, in terms of reflecting revenue increase, let's make believe that's the outcome. Measuring whether a customer adds an item to their shopping cart would have higher insight than measuring whether the customer clicks on a product page, right? So for us, you know, adding an item to the shopping cart and checking out if, if my outcome was to um, you know, improve revenue, uh, to me, that's, that's a measure I would like to track, a, a track and measure. Um, when it comes to effort, effort refers to how much time, knowledge, and resources are needed to baseline track this indicator. So if it's, if it's something that's high insight, high effort, go do it, right? If it's something that's high insight, but high effort, um, then we need to reevaluate how we approach that, right? It is possible that squads and teams uh, do not know uh, how to measure this metric uh, that is high effort. Uh, this means that there's greater uncertainty around this behavior change and maybe opportunity to reduce the risk and thus achieving that outcome, which we'll talk about in a few, right? So this is an example of the uh, two by two matrix. So as I mentioned before, so uh, the, the y-axis is focused on high insight and low insight. The x-axis is focused on low effort and high effort, uh, we really care about the items that are above this line here, right? Uh, so something is high insight, low effort, let's go do it. If something is high insight, high effort, let's figure out how we can approach and addressing that. But ultimately, uh, we want to focus on what, uh, what goes above this line, right? So as an example from the, you know, the OKR mapping tree that we we're on earlier, um, so what we've done, we've, we've taken you know, some of the behaviors now that we've identified from the OKR mapping tree, and then we started to plot them out within this two by two. And then we've identified you know, basically five items that are truly above the line. Uh, the five are, once again, they're a combination of leading and lagging behaviors, right? That have formed, that will form our leading and lagging indicators. Uh, one is around patient requests and buys uh, more uh, of our healthcare products. Another one, which is a lagging behavior. Another one is around ACP or roles in a loyalty program. Uh, so these are high, inf high insight, low effort behaviors. Let's go measure them. Right. Then you have high insight, high effort behaviors. You have ACPs click more call to action links. ACPs become more satisfied with education. And ACPs trials more patients with their healthcare products. These are, these are all somewhat difficult to measure. And in, the, in those in the upper right-hand corner or are probably the most difficult to measure. And so we have an approach to actually address that. So with that being said, that's the example of the two by two prioritization matrix. You may ask, Isaac, great, what's next? That's, that's where we go to 
our measuring and experimentation uh, section of the mural. Uh, we broke this into two sections because remember, there were high insight, low effort um, indicators and behaviors we want to track. And there were high insight, high effort behaviors that we want to track. And so we provided a way to actually go after both. So for the first one, we're going to focus on high insight and low effort indicators. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to baseline and track them. So what we've done is, um, you know, what you see here before you are test cards. Uh, fortunately, I can't take credit for these. Our team can't take credit for these. We stole, begged, and, and took these from uh, Alex Oswalder and then David Bland from Strategizer from the book Testing Business Ideas. Uh, it's a combination of like a, their test cards and learning cards, which we find extremely valuable and help with teams to measure, to identify, baseline, and measure their, um, their key results, their leading and lagging indicators. So you, what you're seeing here is a, like a different variation of that. So um, in this example, for the high insight, low effort indicators, the questions that we're asking is we, we want to make sure we understand team's objectives. We want to make sure we understand the behavior, the indicator um, that's tied to that objective that we're looking to measure. We're going to ask the question, what exactly will you measure? Right? Let's ideate and talk through what exactly we're going to measure. Let's ideate and talk through how you measure it. And let's idea and talk through how do you know you're on track to achieve your outcome based upon what you have here. So for in this example, uh, you know, based upon our prioritization metric in the, in, in the upper right, um, the objective that, that, uh, that this uh, indicator is tied to is drive continuous learning and improve satisfaction for healthcare professionals and office staff. Uh, one indicator that we want to measure uh, is ACP's enroll in the loyalty program. Fantastic, right? What exactly will you measure? We will measure percentage increase of ACPs enroll in the loyalty program each month, right? Fantastic. From there, how will you measure it? Uh, there is data, there is a data repository that stores the current list of ACPs who are enrolled in the loyalty program. We will compare the current bus number with the previous. Very tactical. Uh, you're measuring progress month over month. There's a timeline. And these are early, these are early indicators that the work that you're doing here and addressing this objective uh, may potentially achieve the outcome that you're looking for. And how do you know you're on track to achieve your outcome? Well, you want to see a 5% increase month over month. So you have right now just a baseline of, of your metric. And through conversations, through ideating with, with the product teams, you, you have something to start with. Now, for high insight, high F indicators, um, that are that are high effort. Um, the reason they're high effort are, are a couple of reasons, right? One, it, it may be a result that they're hard to measure, and we don't have something in place to measure them, right? So this speaks to the feasibility of what you're building, what you're doing. It may be because we don't know if we can impact them, right? We don't know if we can actually drive the behavior change that we want. Once again, it's tied to the assumptions we're making around the feasibility of what we're building. Um, we're we make assumptions around the behavior change and tracking this, right? And we may make assumptions around uh, how this indicator reflects progress in the objective and the outcome. So, so once again, tied to desirability and the viability of what we're building. Right? So these high insight and high effort indicators will inform whether or not you're reducing the risk and uncertainty around the desirability, feasibility, and the viability of what you're doing. Early indicators, right? both leading and lagging sometimes, but a lot of times early indicators that tell you whether or not you're attracted to the outcome that you're looking for, right? And then if you can figure these out, this is how you can accelerate business outcomes uh, using OKRs, right? Um, so uh, in this uh, part of the mural, the question is a little different in comparison to um, the other, uh, you know, high insight, low effort um, indicators that we identify. So some of the questions uh, are, are, are the same, like the first, Two questions like what is what is the objective? What is the indicator? Plot those there, and then you're going to ask uh, what needs to be true in order for this indicator to produce high insight into achieving the objective and the outcome. How will you test this hypothesis in the upcoming sprints? What exactly will you measure? How will we know the assumption is correct? And what will we do if the assumption is wrong? So this is our kill criteria. This last question. So if our assumption is wrong. That means that there's a probably a good chance that we will not achieve the outcome and objective that we identified. We may need to pivot. So 
So that's why we're calling that out. Right. So let's let's talk talk through an example. So if you recall, we had one objective: drive continuous learning and improve customer satisfaction for healthcare professionals and and uh, office staff. Um, one behavior or one indicator, which was a lagging behavior that we wanted to um, track, that we prioritized, the ACPs become more satisfied with education. Pretty difficult to measure. All right, we're making an assumption also there. So what is that assumption, right? What needs to be true in order for this indicator to produce high insight to achieving the objective and outcome? And, and what needs to be true is that we believe providing higher quality product education will make ACPs more satisfied. Big assumption. So how are you going to test that? How are you going to validate or invalidate that hypothesis, that assumption? One way you can do that is by doing a split A-B test, comparing the old education page to the new improved education page, right? And you can even do that before even launching and rolling it out. Uh, just on a simple test with a couple of uh, you know, ACPs. And then from there, you can get um, NPS feedback from the ACPs on the two product education page. And, and that's what we're going to measure. We're going to measure the NPS score. And then we'll know um, that our assumption is correct is if the NPS score of the new product page is greater than the NPS score of the old product page. And if we don't see a significant increase, or if we don't see if the NPS scores are relatively the same, that's no, then we know we need to pivot. That's when we need to do a little something different uh, with that page so that we can impact and improve the score. Because if we're not improving the score, there's a good chance that ACPs will not become satisfied with the education. Something different has to happen there to drive that behavior change. Right? Another example is uh, ACPs click more call to action links. So the assumption that we're making there, because this is, we identified this something as uh, high insight by high effort, is that you know, we believe ACPs uh, clicking more call to action links will correlate to ACPs being more satisfied. That's an assumption, right? And that's a, that's a behavior, a leading behavior that's tied to this lagging behavior. Right? So to test this, um, you know, we're going to have it test ACPs navigating the site, track their call to action clicks with the Google Analytics. And then we're also gonna potentially even send the ACPs an NPS satisfaction survey afterwards. Right? And then the metrics we're gonna track is, and the measure is the number of call to action clicks per ACP and the NPS score from the survey. And then we know that our, we, we'll know that our assumption is correct uh, is if ACPs, with a, if ACPs with a higher number of call to action clicks or more likely to be more satisfied, the assumption is validated. But we know that we're wrong is if, it, if we will choose a different leading indicator since there is no correlation and thus is not a good predictor of future performance. So if we realize that we're not getting the measure that we're looking for, and we said that the assumption is correct, we need to reevaluate the leading indicator that we have there and figure out something else to measure whether or not we'll be on track to achieve the outcome that we're looking for. So I hope that was um, uh, pretty clear. Uh, no, once again, the framework that we have here is to help teams you know, prioritize and measure what really matters and use behaviors to accelerate business outcome. As typically, uh, if you know what your customer behavior is, if you know what your business behavior is, uh, typically is the, that is going to be the key metric that informs whether or not you're gonna achieve uh, some level of business success. Thank you for the time. And then, uh, you know, please re don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, always uh, looking forward to support the community. And then the material and content that uh, we reviewed today will also be made, avail made available. Uh, we're looking forward uh, to seeing how folks leverage this. And then once again, uh, thank you for the time. Take care.